Let's bring in ESPN soccer analyst Kate Markgraf to dig deeper on the match. First of all, Kate, what were your thoughts? Let us have our tea. It is tea <laughs> time. What did you think of that celebration? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of those types of celebrations, but that's me personally. But mm -hmm. I do think there's a generational shift on what's appropriate celebrations. But who are we to say that that's not okay? Like, I think this is a team that is trying to cross over many boundaries and not just be a team that is celebrated or watched from a soccer perspective. I mean, now you see Oprah, you see Ellen, <laughs> you see all these people weighing in, and that's something the U.S. team has never been able to do. And I even played on the 99 team, right, mm -hmm. in Rose Bowl, the biggest TV audience in America to watch a soccer team played, whether men's a soccer game played, right. whether men's or women's. So this team is doing something that no other team wearing a soccer jersey if the United States has been able to do, which is cross boundaries. Speaking of this team, one of the most popular players on it is Megan Rapinoe. Mm. Jill Stein decided to, sh you know, she said Jill decided to sit her, which was, you know, shocking to some people, but it turned out she had a hammy. Overall, I mean, what did you think about how that sort of affected perhaps their momentum and just what that, I don't know, meant to the way that the team was operating together in general? Well, I think the United States is getting a little bit more savvy in how they talk about their injuries, or in this case, not talk about their injuries. Usually on the women's side, unlike the men's side, there's a direct line of communication between the head coach and the TV crew. That obviously didn't happen because they were afraid of leaks. Right. So very well done by Jill Ellis to not get it out that Megan Rapinoe was hurt. If Megan Rapinoe was healthy, she would have started. Speaking of which, in the net, I mean, mm. you know, look, there's been so much discussion about what's happened with this team since Hope Solo left and what the goaltending, goalkeeping situation has been. And yesterday we saw a great PK come up with a score. I mean, how do you feel about how that position has developed at this stage in terms of where the team is? Well, I think Alyssa Nair definitely silenced a lot of her haters. And my big thing was, listen, she is facing tougher shots than Hope Solo ever faced. Granted, Hope Solo, in my, my opinion, is the best goalkeeper that has ever played and will take a long time for someone to unseat her because she can make saves no one else can save. Alyssa Nair is a good goalkeeper. She made a save when it mattered. Was it a well-taken PK? Absolutely not. <laughs> it was a bad PK. But give credit to her because she stood the ground. She dove off her line in a way that the rules did not decide to like go against her and have her retake it where she earns a yellow card and all that nonsense right. that was happening on early in the tournament. But in that big moment where she needed to step up and all her detractors said she couldn't do it, she did. So that was just a huge confidence booster for this team because this is a back line that's not nearly as good as it was four years ago. Well, the back line involves Crystal Dunn, one of my favorite players on this yes. team, who had the shutdown tackle at the end of this match. That was incredible. She's been a player that's developed in such a way in this program. I just want to get your thoughts on who she is and who she's become. Oh, Crystal Dunn, this is a player that's been asked to play out of position and play against some of the best attackers in the world. Diani against France is probably the most explosive winger that that's exists. Nuts, yeah. And yeah, Crystal Dunn got beat. And she got beat a lot, but you know what she did? She recovered. And so even though she might have been exploited 1v1 defensively, she was able to come back and help. Now imagine the pressure and the noise that she has heard about she is not a left back, she is not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And on that big stage, in that big moment where it's critical for her more than any other player on the team to step up, she did in a way that made the game predictable and allowed the defense around her to help pick up the slack. She was left off the last World Cup team and she's looked great on this one. Kate, thank you. For thank you very much. It.